Hey, hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you are enjoying your day so far. Now, a lot of you guys might have already noticed, but Swift 4.1 was just recently released, maybe a couple of weeks back. And one of the particularly interesting features, to me at least, is the ability to kind of parse your JSON objects a little bit easier. And basically the feature allows you to parse out something called snake case inside of your JSON object properties. So let's take a look at what's available here at API. Let's build that app.com, JSON decodable, and courses underscore snake case. And some of these properties have these underscores here, here, and here, right? And this format is what we kind of refer to as a snake case. And parsing out these type of properties using Swift 4.0 is a little bit difficult. It's not too hard, uh, but it does include a lot of boilerplate code. So in today's video, I would like to show you what the new feature looks like that allows us to kind of parse out these properties much, much easier. All right, so let's move on to what I have available inside of the Swift Xcode editor right over here. And so let me just scroll up a little bit. And basically, if I run this project right now, we are pretty much rendering this list over here with these three cells that pretty much map to the JSON objects over here. And if you take a look at the course object, the only properties that we have set up so far is the ID, name, and link. And it's pretty much these three properties over here. And we are not decoding these two properties just yet. And so further down, we have fetch JSON inside of did load, which is this function. We look at courses snake case, this URL up here. And then we call URL session, we use data task. And upon completion, we use a JSON decoder down over here on line 42. And then we parse out the data, which is this data. And we decode it into an array of course objects. And then we set it to courses. Finally, we reload the table view with reload data and we get these three cells over there. If you scroll down a little bit further, we have number of rows is courses.count and then we also have cell for row at index path. And uh, we basically set the text label here in the large font to the courses name and then the subtitle label, detail text label. We are just using the course.link property to render out this really, really long link which is pretty much this over here, here, and here. Okay, so if you are not familiar with how JSON decoder works, there's going to be a link in the description below for a video that you should check out. Make sure to watch that and then come back to this video here. All right, so now that you understand what our project is doing, let's move on to parsing out some of these snake case properties outside of our JSON object. Okay, so let me move this guy to the side where it is still visible. And what I am going to do first is to go back up to the course object. And let's say I want to parse out number of lessons outside of this course object, right? So I have ID, name, and link. I'm going to copy number of lessons and declare a new property inside of my course model object. And let's just paste in the exact spelling that we have over there and let it be of type int because these guys are numbers, 49, 39, and 32. And if you run your code now, everything should be okay. You're not going to get any errors. And the JSON is going to parse this thing out perfectly. So I'm going to copy a number of lessons and I'm going to go down to, let's see, table of view, self or row at. And for the subtitle label below, let me use number of lessons instead. And instead of seeing the website link, you'll see the number of course lessons right there. So 49, 39, and 32, exactly what we have in the JSON list. All right, so let's go back up to the course object over here. And let me show you what you should actually do instead of using number of lessons that is spelled like this, because what you should declare your variables to look like is camel case instead. So number of lessons with an S. And the reason why you would want to use camel case is Swift itself defaults to using this convention for all of their variables. And if you use snake case like this, it just looks really out of place. So if you modify that one line of code, and I believe you need to make this change down 
here, you can try to run your project again, but this time you're going to get an error. And you'll see this error right here that says fail to decode key not found number of lessons. And that's pretty much this do catch right here, fail to decode. And the reason why it is erroring out is because number of lessons right here is in camel case, and this guy doesn't exactly reflect this, uh, this property. So you are going to crash with that error. We're not exactly crash, but we're catching that error below. And so what you have to do in Swift 4.0, so let's see, uh, Swift 4.0, is to declare something called a coding key enum. So let me just show you what that looks like. So private enum and coding keys. And this guy, you just want it to be of type string and also conform to this coding key protocol. So inside of here, you want to kind of declare the customized version of how you want to parse out these properties over here. So it might be a little confusing, but once you see what the code looks like, it's going to become much, much clearer. So what you gotta do is to just say case and I'll say number of lessons. So this property up here and the custom string that I want to parse out is this right here. So just copy that and use a quote and quote like so. Now you have to declare a case for each one of your properties inside of your model object that is conforming to decodable. So you just want to say ID, name, and link, and I believe you can build your project again and everything should be fine. So with the coding keys enum, you can now run your code and you'll get the same output as we had before because now our camel case number of lessons, this has been customized to parse out number of lessons using this snake case format over here. So we are able to parse out these numbers correctly. All right, so let's say you also want to parse out image URL, right? What you have to do is to, you know, maybe declare a property called image URL, let it be a type string. And then inside of the coding keys enum, you have to provide the image URL property and let it map to the custom property like so. All right, so running this again, you will get your application to run correctly and you won't get any crashes, right? So basically the idea is in Swift 4.0, anytime you want to provide some kind of customization for your decoding process of your JSON object, you have to provide this private enum coding keys. And while this isn't too difficult to do, uh, you can actually do it much easier inside of Swift 4.1. So let me just remove that. And if you run your code again, you'll crash because you won't have the correct properties to parse out, so you won't crash, but you'll get this error down below, and you won't get the courses inside of your list. So in Swift 4.1, what you can do is, during your fetch JSON procedure over here, when you are constructing your decoder, you just wanna say decoder, and you can set key decoding strategy, and you set it equal to dot convert from snake case. And that's pretty much all you have to do. And your list is going to render out with your courses right over there. So again, this is Swift, see Swift 4.1. And if you read the docs over here, it says that a value that determines how a type's coding keys are decoded from JSON keys. And this guy allows you to convert from snake keys to camel case keys. And you can read the rest of the documentation and you'll see exactly what it does. So this guy makes your code a lot easier to kind of type out. Now you're not always going to be able to use this solution to solve all of your JSON problems, right? There are still a lot of scenarios where you have to provide the custom coding keys just because your server is going to return you some properties that are really, really strange in terms of the name, and this solution still works perfectly using the Swift programming language. All right, everyone, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video on one of the brand new features that is now available in Swift 4.1. If you are interested in downloading today's project, make sure to check it out using the link in the description below. Hopefully you found today's video helpful, give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. If you want some more lessons on Swift, make sure to check out the courses down below as well. That's gonna be it for today. I will see you in the very next video. Bye bye guys.